Hi there, I'm Melo and I collect anime figures. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I know I haven't posted in a while. I've just been really busy with work, life. Um, I got COVID recently, which was not fun. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be sharing with you what I pulled since my last, well, last video. Because I recently posted two quick unboxings of figures and merch I got from Japan. Check those out if you haven't. I got some pretty cool stuff. Um, my favorite would be the glass with my two best girls on it. And, oh, the, um, the Neko shirt. Um, it's a shirt with the Neko design printed on it, which I love and I wish they would make a figure of. Um, I actually got two sizes of that shirt because I wasn't sure if the XL would fit me. So I got the XL and the double XL. The XL fits, but it's pretty snug. <laughs> so it's probably something I would wear inside the house and the double XL would be something I can just wear, uh, wear outside. Anyway, um, so this would be the video for my last last video where you see me on camera again, basically. <laughs> um, so I have opened all of the figures I'm showing you today because I got excited and let's just get to it. First off, we have something from Madoka Magica, and if you watched my previous videos, you would know I'm a big Homura Kim simp, but today we don't have a best girl figure. What we do have is arguably the love interest of best girl, <laughs> and I am talking about Madoka. This is a one in scale figure by Good Small Company, and I'm actually surprised that I got this figure again because I'm a homeware simp and more so because most of the time I would look past modic figures because 90% of them would be in this cute girly poses and I'm kind of not into that but this one looks so different she looks so so elegant so when I saw it on a live selling on Facebook and she was in open and for a good price I pulled the trigger I just love the pose. Monica looks like a ballerina leaping into action. The sculpt is amazing. The frills and ruffles look so good. I love the ribbons on the sides, her soul gem. I love the pink and purple shading against the white. Her face is both haunting and cute. My favorite part is her hair. Good smile just really knows how to make good figure hair. I'm a bit worried about the stability of this figure. I haven't heard any like leaning or I guess the foot breaking <laughs> um, issues but um, the figure itself has a bit of weight to it um, so hopefully nothing bad happens in the future but aside from that this is just a really really gorgeous gorgeous figure. From one Good Smile Company figure to two, <laughs> I have a Vocaloid pair of Rin and Len, and these are also 1-8 scale figures. Honestly, these were impulse buys for me. Together, they were 4,000 yen unopened on the Japan auctions, and I thought they were cheap, and I was curious what the quality was for fairly old figures. These were originally released in 2009 and got a rerun in 2013. Surprisingly, they are pretty decent figures. They remind me of Papa Parades, especially because of the bases. Maybe they were the inspiration for the Papa Parade bases? <laughs> the sculpt's nice and I love their poses. They're fun and dynamic. They both look like they're having fun on stage. Len is my favorite of the two. I think he's a little more detailed. I love the movement of his navel collar and his belt strapping. There's a bit of shading on the glossy black parts and some blue highlights on the white uniform. I absolutely love the keyboard. Ren looks so cute holding her microphone. I thought they went overboard with the shading on the black parts, but looking at this original artwork, it's exactly how it's supposed to look. She also comes with this sign thing that has Japanese writing on it and their names on it. I guess Gizmal was banking that people would buy them as a set. Their faces might 
seem dated, but I am happy to own these OG Ren and Lun figures. For our fourth figure, we have another Ren, but this time it is the best girl of camping, and it is... Shimmerin from Yurikam. I've always wanted a Ren scale. I've always had my eyes on the Altar one with the scooter, although that one is kind of small. It's a 110 scale and is horrific in the aftermarket. Um, but this one by Wang is equally beautiful. It's a really nice figure. Ren looks cozy in her camping chair, drinking probably tea or maybe soup while reading a book. I just wish they went the extra mile and put some text on the book. And it's kind of weird that her feet aren't touching the ground. I love Rin's expression, she's the happiest when she's camping. I also love the different camping accessories she comes with. It perfectly captures episode 1 when we first meet Rin. I will complain about the colors though. Eurocamp is such a lively, colorful show, and I wish they didn't use darker shades, because they did nail the sculpt and design. Ren also comes with a clear base with the Eurocamp logo on it, but I think she would look better displayed without it. I am eyeing on the Fat Company with Dashiko to display with Ren. Our next figure is an incomplete figure? Something I never thought I would be open to. Let me show you the figure. This is Miniora by Pot Company and she is a 1-8 scale figure. And if it isn't obvious what's missing, it is her rocket launcher. A little backstory, I watched like 3 episodes of Free Creators and I fell in love with Miniora and her character design. I then hopped on to Mercari and Yashikan Auctions to see what figures of her were available. And then I see an auction for an opened version of this figure for 3,000 yen, but it's missing the rocket launcher. I then watched a couple of unboxing videos and realized two things. One, the rocket launcher she comes with doesn't seem to be of good quality. And second, I don't think I need the rocket launcher to appreciate Mini Yora and this figure. One last thing I did was I tried to search for how much she would cost me if I wanted to get her complete and I opened. And the cheapest I found was 17,000 yen on Solaris Japan. So 3,000 yen versus 17,000 yen. That decision was so, so easy. I placed a bid, and luckily I won her for 3,000 yen. I think that company did a good job. Face and hair looks like Meteora. The confident pose makes her look elongated and somewhat older. I don't see much shading, but I don't think it needs it either. There's a lot of movement in the figure, and they put text on the spell book, which is awesome. The base is semi-boring, I don't mind the print on it. I would just be careful in carrying her because the pegs aren't very tight on the base, but overall, such a great deal for a solid figure. On to the next figure, and it is by Kurubukiya. We have Shinra from Fire Force. Now, I like the anime, but I'm not super invested in it. It's kind of like Black Clover for me. When I'm watching it, I enjoy it, but it doesn't linger. So even if I like this figure, it was never high on my priority list of figures to get. But whenever I watch videos, it's either getting reviewed or in the background somewhere. So I caved during one of the sale days on Shopee and I got him. But I will get one critique out of the way though. And it is the flames. They don't look like fire to me. <laughs> Here in the Philippines, mango flavored and cheese flavored ice cream are a staple, and that's what this yellow is reminding me of. It looks like swirls of mango strawberry ice cream. But that aside, it's a great figure. It's perfectly Shinra. His firefighting outfit is done really well. 
The logo on the helmet is impeccable. The smirking grin is so spot on. So even if I got the bonus head, I'm probably never going to switch to it. The size and heft of this figure really makes you feel you bought a quality figure. I have Tamaki ordered. She's on the way to me, I think. <laughs> I also want to get Arthur. Um, Arthur is a little more expensive, especially since I want the bonus head. So I'm still on the hunt for him. And Benny Maru, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get him. I just don't like him as a character. So, second to the last figure is a prize figure. But funny enough, it is the biggest figure today. <laughs> it is the Baikute Bunny Hatsune Miku Street Virgin by For You. Let's start with the positives. She does not look like Miku to me, but I adore her badass face. She knows she looks good. Next, let's talk about the size. She's huge. She's practically one seventh, or maybe even a one six. Her price, I got her for 600 pesos, which is roughly 1200 yen. It's a steal. She has real tights. I don't collect quarter scale bunnies, so I have no point of reference, but these look and feel good. The sculpt is decent. The only parts that are messy to me are the gloves. I love her colors. The neon yellow really pops. Negatives, her bunny ears are very loose. It's easy to put them back on, but it's kind of annoying. And why is her bunny tail so big? I don't understand. This is a really cool aesthetic. If you're into Miku or bunny figures and don't want to break the bank, this is a no-breaker. And for our last figure, it is my first Hobby Max figure. This is... HK416, gift from the Black Cat version. HK416 is my absolute favorite character design from Girls Front Line. I love her hair, I love her eyes, I love her red blood tear tattoo on her face. I got her from Meow Japan Auctions for 10,000 yen used. But I want to show you the box because I feel like this is the most luxurious box I've ever opened. <laughs> so here is the box. I think this is the front of the box. Um, it's actually held by this square ring thing, which kind of reminds me of opening like a like a smartphone box almost. And then you can open up this part that's held by Velcro. You know, like a window and you can see the artwork the figure is based on. I don't know. To me it felt like a really really expensive <laughs> unboxing and even like the instructions she comes with is on this thick glossy paper that I normally only see with like brochures and stuff and this has a hobby max I don't know authenticity card or something and also comes with this thing that has a code I don't know if it still works I don't know what it's for maybe it's with, with the game <laughs> and it says here that only 16,000 of these figures were made I think so if you want to get it I think it's gonna be pretty easy to get it <laughs> anyway back to the figure here she is in I know, she looks amazing, but I do want to ask you, what do you think made me want to get this figure? Like, what part of this figure made me want to buy it? If you're saying HK416, yes, you're correct, but you might not be thinking of the same HK416 I am. It's these little Lego-like accessories that really pushed me to get this figure. Because they're so damn cute. They also add a nice contrast of color to the whole composition. Hence, they also cause the base to be bigger. This is my first soft, fluffy base. The main figure is just chef's kiss. 
She looks innocent and harmless, but then you see an impressively sculpted rifle behind her. I'm very satisfied with the sculpt and paint job. The black cat is adorable. Her face is so angelic and beautiful. Her hair sculpt is divine. There is one forgivable scene line at the back, but you barely look at her from the back. Anyway, so not a biggie. I think she might be in my top 10 favorite figures ever. I'm really excited that Hobby Max is also doing UMP 45. I think it's called the Lop Eared Rabbit Agent version. I'll show you a photo. Um, it looks so, so cute. I hope they also make like the MP9 and like the other girl in their squadron because they're all in one squad in Girls Frontline. I would absolutely collect this line from Hobby Max. And that's it for today's video. I hope I made it up a little bit for my long absence. I also hope you give this video a like and comment down below which figure you like the most from this haul. I have more figures to share with you, so please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, thank you for 200 subs, I will see you in the next one. Take care, bye!